So first of all, we'll start off with the robin. Quite symbolic of Christmas time. You can most usually spot them by their red chests. So as we move down onto the beach, we come across the ringed plover. The uh, small, dumpy, short-legged wading bird is particularly my favourite as it scuttles around. You can imagine the Benny Hill theme tune playing in the background. It's uh, brownish grey above and uh, whitish below. Orange bill tipped with black, orange legs and a black and white pattern on its head and breast. As it scuttles over the sand it uh, looks for flies, uh, marine worms, crustaceans, mollusks, things like that. But elsewhere it can eat spiders and other types of flies. And then as we move away from the ring plover, we come across the vocal bird, the oyster, oyster catcher. A large, stocky, black and white wading bird, long orange red bill and a reddish pink legs. It, it scuttles across the, uh, the sand, as does the ring plover, eating mussels, cockles on the coasts. Here, Mungo is looking for a shag but it appears to be quite elusive for him. Let's see if he can find it. Nope. <sighs> oh, I lost it. Oh. We can't see it. And here we have the beautiful song thrush, popular garden bird, but uh, unfortunately the numbers are declining rapidly and has been put on the red list for endangered species. It's uh, smaller than the missile thrush and with smaller spots on its chest. And here we have a chuff nesting site. Unfortunately we didn't see any of the chuffs, we heard them. But uh, just so you know what one looks like, here's a nice picture of a chuff. And here we have the beautiful and very wonderful Red Cove Feeding Centre, also known as Bulwich Nantiarian, which I'm not sure of the translation, but it's a outstanding forest recreation centre in the heart of Mid Wales, and it is beautiful. The red kite is a very graceful bird of prey, with its reddy brown underside and beautiful red tail. You can definitely spot it floating around if you... If you're driving through Wales, Central Wales, Central England sometimes, uh, Central Scotland, and that they are beautiful, beautiful birds, and they are coming back from the brink of extinction due to fantastic conservation. I mean, this particular red kite feeding centre is just fantastic. I've been going there for a number of years now, and the amount of kites every time I've gone has increased every time, and so that's just fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's very odd to see red kites on the ground as they usually just swoop down, pick it up and then fly off and eat it mid-flight. But they feel so comfortable in this red kite feeding centre that they are happy enough. One thing I find very fascinating about the red kite is the fact that they are intelligent enough to swoop down over where they have been fed to make sure there are no traps or poison or anything that seems that they're going to attack, attack them. So here you see them swooping and swirling around above where the food has been laid just to check, check out what's going on.
about 18th century red kites had bred for the last time in England, and so was the story was similar in Scotland. The in rural mid Wales red kites hung on. There was only a few few pairs, and over a hundred years, its people, landowners, rural communities, dedicated individuals, and organisations have helped protect them and bring them back. Wales now has over 600 breeding pairs. My time in Clarence Bay has come to an end. And if it's one thing I've learnt about this time I've been here, even though I've been here many times before, is that it doesn't matter how much you look for nature, you can still hide from it. And only by going out and taking a walk or sitting on a bench or taking a walk on a beach that you will see nature and nature will come to you. And you have to look out for these small gems like the to see some of the wonders that Britain has for us.